Okay, so this is chapter 5, number 29, okay? Uh, so you can read the problem, and we read it yesterday already. And it's asking us to find what is the initial speed of the card as it left the guy's hands, okay? So first of all, here's my picture. It's just a card sliding this way. Okay, I know it's going to accelerate the other way because we come to a stop. And they're asking for us, what's the initial velocity? When you get that, automatically when you're asked how fast, how far, how long, you don't think forces, you think what? Not free by diagrams and summing forces, you start to think what? Motion equations, the kinematic equations, okay? So I'm going to start there because on a test, that's probably where you'll start, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and call up into the right positive for all my problems, okay? By the way, if I stop writing this ever, you can assume I've called up and right positive if I forget to write this, okay? All right, so I'm going to list the five variables, okay? X minus X naught, initial velocity, acceleration, time, and final velocity. Now, based on this problem, it's something sliding to a stop, a card, or shuffleboard, whatever it might be. Okay, in this case, it's a card. Whoops. We don't want to use the teacher manual. All right. This book that's falling apart, this is going to mimic my card. Okay, that's the picture in your mind, right? It's sliding to a stop. It leaves my hand with some initial velocity, and then it comes to a stop. Let's fill out any of the five variables we can, okay? We're looking for this one, right? Did they tell us how far it takes to come to a stop? No. Okay. Did they tell us, wait, what were we solving for again? Initial velocity? They told us something else. It said 0.35 meters. Along oh, it does tell us how far. It does tell us how far. What is it? 0.35 meters. 0.35 meters. They say it takes 0.35 meters to come to a stop. Okay. If it comes to a stop, okay, what's the other one we know up here? V final, and that is, of course, zero. Okay. They didn't give us any other ones. They didn't give us time, and we're looking for initial, and they didn't give us acceleration. So at this point, could you do this problem with just kinematic equations or the motion equations, whatever you want to call them? No, because how many things do we know? Two. How many things do we need to know? Three. Three. Okay. So at this point, you're stuck. On the first test, if I gave you this, that wouldn't have been fair. You wouldn't have known what to do next. Okay. Uh, so what's the one variable we can get from our new stuff? That is acceleration. We can get accelerations. And what direction is it in? The x, something sliding to a stop. So at this point, now I need to do the new stuff. Free body diagram, sum the forces, and eventually I'll get an acceleration. Once I get that acceleration, then I go back and I do a motion problem, which I'm not going to work all the way through the motion problem. I'm going to get to the point where we're at that. Okay? So a free body diagram is the card or the book or whatever on Earth. Sure. Is there a perpendicular contact force? Obviously, there's a surface. And it's sliding to a stop. Once it leaves the person's hand, Person's not Luke Skywalker, they don't have telekinesis, can they push on it anymore? No. So what's the only force acting on something when it's sliding to a stop, if you neglect air resistance? Friction, and it opposes the motion. So we're going this way, so friction will go the other way. Since it's sliding, it means it's moving, should be kinetic. Questions, who originally asked about this problem? Was it? Who asked about 29? Otherwise, I'm just going to stop. Well, I was going to ask you. You're going to ask about it. All right. Are you, I just want someone to check in with. Are we okay up to here? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to sum the forces in the x equals mass times acceleration in the x. How many forces do I have? One. Force of friction kinetic equals max. Okay, this is one of those rare times when there's only one force over here. Okay. All right. Now, did they give me friction in the problem? Nope. Okay. Do I have another equation? Oh, did they give me mass of the card? I can't remember. Yeah. We have to match the card good. Okay. Uh, so I need another equation for friction. Okay. There's only so many things we can do right now. We can sum force in the x, we can sum force in the y, or we can write an equation for friction. That's it when it comes to forces. Okay. So I'm going to write up here somewhere force of friction kinetic equals mu sub k times normal. Did they give us mu sub k in the problem? I hope so. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So now to get friction so that I can get the acceleration so that I can plug it in over here. I need to get the normal force, okay? How do I get the normal force? I sum the forces in the y direction. And this one's been pretty automatic up until this point. Normal plus weight, that should look very familiar. We've done that about 15, 20 times now. The y direction's been the same almost every time, okay? And now I need to calculate the weight. That's just some scratch work. What was the uh, mass of the object? Someone tell me. 2.3 grams. 
2.3 grams. Okay, so let me do some scratch work. 2.3 grams, okay? So if you forget how to convert, you can always do this. Pick a fence, since we're doing this for the video, just in case somebody can't convert, okay? So there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. So I'm gonna move the decimal place over how many spots? Divided by 1,000, move it over three, right? Okay, so one and then two zeros. So 0 0.0023 kilograms. Before I go any further, is that right? I didn't mess anything up in my head. Somebody nod. Okay. All right. So there's how you do the conversion. Okay. So we're going to use this number, not the 2.3 grams. Why? Because our base unit for mass is kilograms, and that's what newtons are based on and everything else. Can't do the problem in grams. It won't work. Okay. All right. So we get rid of that. So force of the weight will be point, was it 0, 0, 0,023 yeah. kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm going to have to erase this in a minute. So if you want that, actually, let me move it over right now. because it's a long number. So I'm just doing this down here. Force of weight equals 0 0.0023 kilograms times a negative 9.8. Does anybody have that number? If not, could somebody get it? 0 0.0225. Thank you. Okay, 0 0.0025. So now I can get the normal force. Minus 0 0.0225 newtons equals 0. So the normal force, 0 0.0225 newtons. Now I can get friction. Because at this point, the dominoes start to fall, right? We've got all the way out to the last thing we didn't know. We calculated. Now we just start going and plugging it in everywhere, OK? So I take this, and I plug it in up here. What was mu sub k from the problem? It was in the problem. Somebody? Point what? 0 0.4? 0.24. 0.24, OK? So I'm going to take 0.24 times 0 0.0225 newtons. There's a parentheses there, that's 0 0.0225 newtons. Does somebody have that number for me? Point two four times point zero two two five. What is it? Point zero zero five. Point zero zero five newtons. Okay, now. This equation, once again, does not tell me the direction. I have to look at my free body diagram. Which way is friction going? To the left. If you forget it here, it'll mess you up, okay? Got to put the negative on here. And this should make sense because when I plug this number in here, my acceleration had better be to the left. I already thought about that. So we have negative 0 0.005 newtons equals 0 0.0023 kilograms. times the acceleration. So we're going to get negative something. What's 0.005 divided by 0 0.0023? 2.34 meters per second squared. All right, I'm going to stop there for a minute and take questions before I explain the last step. If you got lost in summing force in the y, let me know. If you got lost in summing force in the x, let me know. You didn't know where this came from or where we got numbers from? Please ask. Yeah, I got a question. Yep, where at? Uh, yeah, where, I thought it was point zero zero two five, not two three. Two five kilograms. So where at? Here? Yeah, over there on the left. That one. No. This? No, other side. Right this. There. Yeah. This is the mass. Okay. The mass is measured in kilograms. Oh, okay. Right. This is a weight, which is a force, that's in newtons. Okay. This is because this is the mass of the car. Is okay. that right? Other questions? They're two different things, right? Mass does, stays the same no matter where you're at. Your weight changes if you go from like the Earth to the moon. We have to calculate the weight for the planet we're on. The mass is whatever it's given as. Okay. And we converted that from grams, right, to 2.3 grams. Okay, so now at this point, you're not done. You've got to take this acceleration and put it over here. Okay. At that point, and it does make sense that it's negative because the car was going to the right. Okay. So the acceleration, if it's slowing, if it's going to the right and slowing down, acceleration points the other way. Okay. You take this. Now, how many things do you know here? Three. I'm going to stop at this point. If you need help with this, that's like from chapter way long time ago, right? First test. Come in and get help. But at this point, you pick the equation, you substitute your values, you do your algebra, and you solve for initial velocity. If you do that correctly. You should get whatever I read off the other day. What number is this? 29? Um, 
see, 29 should come out to 1.3 meters per second, and it should be a positive value. So if you end up taking the square root of both sides, pick the positive answer. Questions? But if you can't go from here to here, you need to get in probably today after school so I can review motion equations with you. Also, there are those other video problems that do those types. Go on once, go on twice. All right. I'll leave that up there for.